Can everyone say good day? Good day. That's the Australian way of saying hello. Welcome to the 16th Sakya Dita Conference here in Australia. Our very first time out of Asia. Yeah! Uh, first of all, I'd, I'd like to acknowledge my elders past and present. We're Sakyadita means Daughters of the Buddha. It's an alliance of lay women and nuns from around the world uh, who are dedicated to helping Buddhist women, but it's open to everyone, both men, women, lay women, ordained women, lay men, ordained men, and people of all different religions. So it's basically inclusive, but our focus has always been on benefiting Buddhist women around the world. Sakyadita, from the experience that I've had here in Australia, has been an extraordinary encounter. There are academic papers presented, there are uh, uh, contemplative uh, practices that all of us in, have engaged in. Yesterday we made kimchi, I thought that was really, really fun, and this morning we ate the kimchi. And um, we have become friends. And I've heard the voices of women from uh, Bhutan and Sri Lanka and Ladakh and Korea and Thailand and just women I would never have the opportunity to meet and have learned so much from them. And I feel like the bonds that uh, have been forged uh, in the course of these days are life friendships where we will collaborate uh, as, as long as we live um, to work together as women in uh, deepening uh, our realization as Buddhists, but also deepening our commitment to justice in Buddhist communities everywhere. So Sakitita is actually very unique because not only is it intended for women, but it is also totally non-sectarian. So we have Buddhists from all the Buddhist world in Asia and in the West, uh, monastics and laywomen, and everybody comes together and recognizes that there's no you know, essentially there's no Hinayana, Mahayana, Vajrayana, we're all Buddhayana. We all have a common devotion to the Three Jewels. And when we get talking, we find that, that so much of our practice is really the same. Our basic view is very much the same. There really is not that much difference in all the traditions when you get down to it. Bye. In the beginning, you know, it was mostly about interpersonal discussions and talks. But we've developed a format that includes workshops, cultural performances, meditation has been there from the beginning, as well as academic presentations. So there's something for everyone here. The format of the Sakyadita Conference actually reaches out to everyone of all these different backgrounds and also introduces people to other dimensions of human experience. So here too, we see ourselves as independent people. I'm here. 
I make up my own mind. I'm going to decide what things I'm going to come to during the conference. And I'm going to decide what time I go to bed. And you know, I'm in charge of my life. One of my teachers said we're like yo-yos. They serve what we like at breakfast. Mm. They serve what we don't like at breakfast. Mm. You know, we are not stable. We really are like yo-yos. Until now, from 1987 until the last conference, the first 15 conferences were held in Asia, which makes sense when we consider that 99% of Buddhist women live in Asia. But the significance of having the 16th Sakyadita Conference in Australia is that Buddhism is now part of world culture, and you find Buddhists all around the world. The reason we're holding it in Australia is because the Asians wanted to know what Buddhism looked like in the West. So in a Buddhist country, of course, you have also the network underpinning it of uh, the various temples around and the various lay supporters. Um, in Australia, um, we are one thing holding it in this uh, rather fancy hotel. And also there is not the same kind of um, indigenous support which you would get if you were in a Buddhist country. So it, it's in that way very different. This is really one of the great strengths of Sakyadita is that from the beginning we've managed to bring people together from such widely different cultures and backgrounds. So the richness of human culture is actually an asset that we can all draw from. And all of these beautiful multicultural resources that we can draw from to help preserve and help human culture to flourish. Vajra Vine The goddess offers the diamond loot. Vajra Bamsi The goddess offers the diamond flute. Vajra Mridangi The goddess offers the diamond drum. Vajra Murje The goddess offers the diamond tambourine. Vardra la sie Vardra male What we've done over these past days is to explore some of the issues that have caused uh, deep suffering for women and for whole communities, not just of women, but of men, women, and children um, in the Buddhist world, but also I think it applies really to all uh, religious communities and really all communities in, in per se. My paper is on the silent no more. Critical review of sexual exploitations in Buddhist practice, a monastic perspective. But of course, one of the loaded questions which came up first was this whole question of um, uh, inappropriate uh, sexual activities going on in various Dharma centers and the tremendous sense of disappointment that so many have had not only because of the behavior of the teachers, but also uh, the, be, the response from the organizations who are, you know, under those teachers, the, the dismissal of these uh, reports of sexual misconduct, the sweeping under the carpet, the um, absolute denial of wanting to be involved in that and blaming the victim, I mean the usual you know, blaming the victim and um, exonerating the perpetrators. And so uh, this, of course, is a very hot topic at the moment. So that's one of the problems which has come up. <laughs> Money. 
The topic for this conference has been, you know, these new horizons in Buddhism. We're in the 21st century now. How to preserve the traditions, not throwing out the baby with the bathwater, but at the same time moving in to this new era, which is so challenging, and making use of this new era, making use of new technology, understanding of psychology, more interest in social outreach, and of course, much more uh, influence of the feminine, which is of course what this conference is about, is hearing the muted voice of the feminine. So this is a very important uh, function for Sakidita that women have their voice. Whether or not we call ourselves a Buddhist is really, well, it's irrelevant to Buddhists. <laughs> um, the main thing is, do we practice these virtues of loving kindness, compassion, and wisdom? So what the Buddhist teachings have to offer is open to everyone, free of charge. I'm very happy to be here at Sakyadita. It's been inspiring, instructive, and I'm a convert. Now here we are, and this is the last day, and you're all leaving. How did it happen? It took us so long to organize. But anyway, I hope that all of you have benefited greatly from this conference. It is something very unique in the Buddhist world, where so many women and some gentlemen likewise all come together in harmony, all appreciating each other, making lifelong friends when you come here. So really, this is what keeps us going, that we really believe in you and we believe in Sakidita. Muru kili numbari buri arangara para buddha kadi bango ara wago jarilong. Gumina. Nalawan. Muru kili numbari buri arangara para buddha kadi bango ara wago jarilong. Gumina. Nalawan. Mukili numbari buri arangara para buddha kadi bango aro wago charlong. Gumina. Nalawan. Now, this is how I pictured you guys singing it. Mukili numbari buri arangara para buddha kadi. Bango ada wagu jarelong. Turuk. Gumada. Nalawan.